Dear people watching and listening, Assalamu alaikum. Kindly like and share this video with your friends and family and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Please support my channel by contributing to my Patreon account so that I can continue making the audiobook series. Is the Bible God's Word? Start of Chapter 4 50,000 Errors The Jehovah's Witnesses in their Awake magazine, dated 8 September 1957, carried this startling headline, 50,000 Errors in the Bible. While I was still formulating the theme of this booklet, I heard a knock at my door one Sunday morning. I opened the door. A European gentleman stood there, grinning broadly. Good morning, he said. Good morning, I replied. He was offering me his Awake and Watchtower magazines. Yes, a Jehovah's Witness. If a few had knocked at your door previously, you will recognize them immediately. The most supercilious lot of people who ever knocked at people's doors. I invited him in. As soon as he settled down, I produced a full reproduction of what you see on the screen. Pointing to the monograph at the top of the page, I asked, Is this yours? He readily recognized his own. I said, It says 50,000 errors in the Bible. Is it true? What's that? He exclaimed. I repeated. I said that it says that there are 50,000 errors in your Bible. Where did you get that? He asked. This was published 35 years ago, when he was perhaps a little nipper. I said, leave the fancy talk aside. Is this yours? Pointing again to the monograph. Awake, he said. Can I have a look? Of course, I said. I handed him the page. He started perusing. They, the Jehovah's Witnesses, are trained. They attend classes five times a week in their kingdom halls. Naturally, they are the fittest missionaries among the thousand and one sects and denominations of Christendom. They are taught that when cornered, do not commit yourself to anything. Do not open your mouths. Wait for the Holy Ghost to inspire you with what to say. I silently kept watching him while he browsed the page. Suddenly he looked up. He had found it. The Holy Ghost had tickled him. He began. The article says that most of those errors have been eliminated. I asked, if most are eliminated, how many remain out of the 50,000, 5,000, 500, 50? Even if 50 remain, do you attribute those errors to God? He was speechless. He excused himself by suggesting that he will come again with some senior member of his church. That will be the day. If I had this booklet ready, I would have offered him saying, I would like to do you a favor. Give me your name and address and your telephone number. I will lend you this booklet. It's the Bible, God's Word, for 90 days. I want a written reply. If you do this, and a few other Muslims do the same, they and the other missionaries will never darken your doors again. I believe that this publication will prove the most effective talisman to date. Insha'Allah. This cult of Jehovah's Witnesses, which is so strong in its condemnation of the Orthodox Trinitarians for playing with the Word of God, is itself playing the same game of semantic gymnastics. In the article under review, 50,000 Errors in the Bible, they say there are probably 50,000 errors, errors that have crept into the Bible text, 50,000 such serial errors. Most of those so-called errors as a whole, the Bible is accurate. We do not have the time and space to go into the tens of thousands of grave or minor defects that the authors of the Revised Standard Version, RSV, have attempted to revise. We leave that privilege to the Christian scholars of the Bible. Here I will endeavor to cast just a cursory glance at half a dozen or so of those minor changes. 1. 
Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. Holy Bible, Isaiah, chapter 7, verse 14, from A.V. The indispensable virgin in the above verse has now been replaced in the RSV with the phrase a young woman, which is the correct translation of the Hebrew word Alma. Alma is the word which has occurred all along in the Hebrew text and not Betula, which means virgin. This correction is only to be found in the English language translation as the RSV is only published in this tongue. For the African and the Afrikaner, the Arab and the Zulu, in fact, in the 1500 other languages of the world, Christians are made to continue to swallow the misnomer virgin. Begotten, not made. Jesus is the only begotten Son of God. Begotten, not made. He is an adjunct of the Orthodox Catechism, leaning for support on the following. 2. For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Holy Bible, John, chapter 3, verse 16, from A.V. No priest worth his cloth would fail to quote the only begotten of the Father when preaching to a prospective convert. But this fabrication, begotten, has now been unceremoniously excised by the Bible revisers without a word of excuse. They are silent as church mice and would not draw the reader's attention to their furtive excision. This blasphemous word, begotten, was another of the many such interpolations in the Holy Bible. God Almighty condemned this blasphemy in the strongest terms soon after its innovation. He did not wait for 2,000 years for Bible scholars to reveal the fraud. And they say, God most gracious has begotten a son. Indeed, ye have put forth a thing most monstrous. At it the skies are ready to burst. And the earth to split asunder. And the mountains to fall down in utter ruin. That they should invoke a son for God most gracious. For it is not consonant with the majesty of God most gracious. That he should beget a son. Holy Quran, Surah Maryam, Chapter 19, Verses 88 to 92. The Muslim world should congratulate the 50 cooperating denominations of Christendom and their brains trust the 32 scholars of the highest eminence for bringing their holy Bible a degree nearer to the Quranic truth. Lam yalid wa lam yulad. He, God Almighty, begets not, nor is he begotten. Holy Quran, Surah Ikhlas, Chapter 112, Verse 3. Christian Mathematics 3. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. Holy Bible, First Epistle of John, Chapter 5, Verse 7, from the A.V. This verse is the closest approximation to what the Christians call their Holy Trinity in their encyclopedia called the Bible. This keystone of the Christian faith has also been scrapped from the RSV without even a semblance of explanation. It has been a pious fraud all along and well deservedly has it been expunged in the RSV for the English-speaking people. But for the 1,499 remaining language groups of the world who read the Christian concoction in their mother tongues, the fraud remains. These people will never know the truth until the Day of Judgment. However, we Muslims must again congratulate the galaxy of DDs who have been honest enough to eliminate another lie from the English RSV Bible, thus bringing their holy book yet another step closer to the teachings of Islam 
for the Holy Quran says, Wala taqulu salasa, and don't say Trinity. Intahu khairul lakum, desist, it will be better for you. Innam Allahu ilahun wahid, for Allah is one God. Holy Quran, Surah Nisa, chapter 4, verse 171. The Ascension One of the most serious of those grave defects which the authors of the RSV had tried to rectify concerned the ascension of Christ. There have been only two references in the canonical Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke and of John to the most stupendous event in Christianity, of Jesus being taken up into heaven. These two references were obtained in every Bible in every language prior to 1952 when the RSV first appeared. These were 4a. So then the Lord Jesus, after he had spoken to them, was taken up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. Holy Bible. Mark chapter 16 verse 19. 4b. While he blessed them, he parted from them and was carried up into heaven. Holy Bible. Luke Chapter 24, verse 51. Now look at this, which is a photocopy where the quotation 4a above ought to appear. You will be shocked to note that Mark 16 ends at verse 8, and after an embarrassing expanse of blank space, the missing verses appear in small print as a footnote at the bottom of the page. If you can lay your hands on a RSV 1952, you will find the last six words of 4b above, that is, and was carried up into heaven, replaced by a tiny k to tell you to see the footnote if you please, where you will find these missing words. Every honest Christian has to admit that he does not consider any footnote in any Bible as the word of God. Why should the paid servants of Christianity consign the mightiest miracle of their religion to a mere footnote? From the chart, the origin and growth of English Bible, you will note that all the biblical versions prior to the revised version of 1881 were dependent upon the ancient copies, those dating only five or six hundred years after Jesus. The revisers of the RSV 1952 were the first Bible scholars who were able to tap the most ancient copies, fully dating three and four centuries after Christ. We agree that the closer to the source, the more authentic is the document. Naturally, most ancient deserves credence more than mere ancient, but not finding a word about Jesus being taken up or carried up into heaven in the most ancient manuscripts, the Christian fathers expurgated those references from the RSV 1952. The Donkey Circus the above facts are a staggering confession by Christendom that the inspired authors of the canonical Gospels did not record a single word about the ascension of Jesus. Yet these inspired authors were unanimous in recording that their Lord and Saviour rode a donkey into Jerusalem as his mission drew to a close. And they sat him thereon, the donkey. Holy Bible, Matthew chapter 21 verse 7. And he sat upon him, the donkey. Holy Bible, Mark, chapter 11, verse 7. And they sat Jesus thereon, the donkey. Holy Bible, Luke, chapter 19, verse 35. Jesus sat thereon, the donkey. Holy Bible, John, chapter 12, verse 14. Could God Almighty have been the author of this incongruous situation? going out of his way to see that all the gospel writers did not miss their recording of his son's donkey ride into the holy city, and yet inspiring them to black out the news about his son's heavenly flight on the wings of angels? Not for long. The hot gospelers and the Bible thumpers were too slow in catching the joke. By the time they realized that the cornerstone of their preaching, the ascension of Jesus, had been undermined as a result of Christian biblical erudition. The publishers of the RSV had already raked in a net profit of $15 million. The propagandists made a big hue and cry, 
and with the backing of two denominational committees out of the 50, forced the publishers to reincorporate the interpolations into the inspired word of God. In every new publication of the RSP after 1952, the expunged portion was restored to the text. It is an old, old game. The Jews and the Christians have been editing their book of God from its very inception. The difference between them and the ancient forgers is that the ancient forgers did not know the art of writing prefaces and footnotes, otherwise they too would have told us clearly as our modern heroes have about their tampering and their glib excuses for transmuting forged currency into glittering gold. Many proposals for modification were submitted to the committee by individuals and by two denominational committees. All of these were given careful attention by the committee. Two passages, the longer ending of Mark, chapter 16, verses 9 to 20, and Luke, chapter 24, verse 51, are restored to the text. Preface, Collins, page 6 and 7. Why restored? Because they have been previously expunged. Why had the references to the ascension expunged in the first place? The most ancient manuscripts had no references to the Ascension at all. They were interpolations similar to 1 John chapter 5 verse 7 about the Trinity. Why eliminate one and reinstate the other? Do not be surprised. By the time you lay your hands on a RSV, the committee might also have decided to expunge the whole of their invaluable preface. The Jehovah's Witnesses have already eliminated 27 revealing pages of their foreword to their New World Translation of the Christian Greek Scriptures. This is their way of saying New Testament. Allah in the Christian Bible The Reverend C. I. Schofield, D.D., with a team of eight consulting editors, also all D.D.'s in the Schofield Reference Bible, thought it appropriate to spell the Hebrew word Ilah, meaning God, alternatively as Allah. The Christians had thus swallowed the camel. They seemed to have accepted at last that the name of God is Allah, but were still retaining at the Gnat by spelling Allah with one L. References were made in public lectures to this fact by the author of this booklet. Believe me, the subsequent Schofield Reference Bible has retained word for word the whole commentary of Genesis chapter 1 verse 1, but has by a clever sleight of hand blotted out the word Allah altogether. There is not even a gap where the word Allah once used to be. This is in the Bible of the Orthodox. One is hard pressed to keep up with their jugglery. End of chapter 4